In this video, we're going to look at some patterns. We're going to do a couple of different patterns. We're going to do the polar patterns, some linear patterns, and then we're going to do some patterns on a path. I'm going to show you how to do that in the draft workbench. I'm going to try and keep it simple uh, so that you can see the concepts and then you can use them in your own designs. Of course, before we start, I'm going to show you my version. I'm actually still on the latest download of FreeCAD, the latest released download. So it's version 0.19, sometimes referred to as 0.19.1, and it's 2427 Git, and I downloaded it in March of this year. So first things first, we're going to start a new file. So I'm just going to click over here to do create an empty document. And then I'm going to create a part. And then inside that part, I'm going to create a body. So there you can see the part. I'm going to create a body. So now I have a body. And now my body is um, my standard. Now I'm going to just save this thing. I'm going to save it as pattern patterns free CAD. There already was one, but I'm going to overwrite that. So what we're going to do, let's just move that a little bit to the left. So I got a little bit more space. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a body. Now you, you know how to do this. So I'm just going to do it fairly quickly. So we're going to go to the sketcher. We're going to create a new sketch. And we're going to create that sketch on the X, Y plane and say, okay. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so that I make it a decent size. I'm just going to make a square or a rectangle that I can put some holes into. So I will constrain that thing. I'm going to go from this corner to this corner to the center. And we're going to make that symmetrical. And then I'm going to give it a couple of dimensions. So I'm going to dimension this side. We're going to make that 150. And I'm going to dimension this side and we're going to make that 250 for no other reason than I I just want a space where I can put some holes. Now, if I was just going to create holes, uh, map them out and just put them in here, I could certainly do that. But that's not the way we want to do this, because if I try to create a pattern from a hole that I create in this sketch, it will try and pattern the whole thing. It won't pattern just the holes. So I want to pattern just the holes, so I'm going to draw the holes separately. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to pad it, and I'm just going to let it be 10 millimeters thick because that's the default. And I'm going to hit this little guy to put it back in the middle, and there you can see. So I just created um, just a block that I can put some holes in. So I want to show you how we pattern some holes in this. And to do that, I'm going to create another sketch. It's also going to be on the XY plane. I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to create um, just a circle. And I'm going to constrain that. So because it's a diameter, I'm going to constrain the diameter. We'll call that 10 millimeters in diameter. And then I'm going to constrain this guy. Now, one of my subscribers pointed out that if you just select this point, and then you say dimension. It will give you a dimension back to the origin, which is great. However, because my circle is in the negative quadrant in the Y plane, it makes this dimension a negative dimension. I personally don't like that. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm not going to do it that way. So I'm going to go from here to here. And I'm going to hit that. And now you see it's a positive. There's no minus sign in front of there. So just a tip that you can do that. And we can obviously do it this way if we're doing this dimension. That one is perfectly uh, perfectly okay because it's a positive dimension. I, don't, I just don't like the negative dimensions. You can use them if you want to. But I find that if we go with a negative dimension, then we start doing some... some uh, spreadsheet work or whatever, we have to take into account that we have a negative dimension rather than a positive. So I'm happier with the positive dimensions, but I just want to show you that tip. Okay, so let's close that. And now what I'm going to do is poke a hole through there. So I want to do a, um, a pocket. 
and I'm going to pocket it all the way through. So I'm going to say through all. And you can see nothing showed up. If that ever happens to you, what it probably means is your hole is going in the wrong direction. So if you just hit reversed and say, OK, now you'll see my hole is actually through the plate. So I'm going to move this guy a little bit, bring it to the center. A couple of things I want to make sure you're aware of. So if I've turned this model and I now have it a bit of an angle, if I want to get it face on, I can go to this cube and you see where the top is highlighting. If I click that, it's going to turn it so that it's face on to me. So now I can see that um, block with that face on to me. Now, if I want to create a pattern from this, what we're going to do, I'm actually going to just twist it a little bit so you can see. So I'm going to select that hole and I'm going to create a pattern. And I'm going to do a linear pattern. Now, the way the linear pattern works is it's going to create holes across this length. So if my hole is here, this next hole is 100 millimeters center to center from this hole. The number of holes, the occurrences, that's how many holes are going to be along that 100 millimeters. So if I make it three holes, where do you think the third hole will show up? And I'm going to just go to the top so you can see it. Where do you think the third hole is going to show up? So if you guessed in the middle, you're correct. So what it does, it's got 100 millimeters. And now it's doing three evenly spaced. So I've got one at each end and one in the middle. Also, if I go to four or five, they're evenly spaced across the 100 millimeters. If I want it to be more, I can increase that size. If I make that, let's say 120. Now the distance between here and here is 120 and I have five holes. Now what I can do is I can increase this distance. Let's say I increase it to 300. Now we know that my plate is only 250 across there and I'm starting somewhere along. So 300 is going to go off the end. With linear patterns, if you go off the end with a pocket like that, it just won't care. It'll only create the ones you can see. And these ones are out in space. So you wouldn't want to do that if you're creating a linear pattern. So from your linear pattern, you want to keep it within the bounds of your part. So that's a linear pattern of that circle. And I'm just going to, I'm actually going to delete that linear pattern now. And I'm going to show you a polar pattern. So now I have no pattern. I'm going to select that hole once more. And I'm going to say create a polar pattern. Now this is a polar pattern with 360 degree angle and there's two instances. So if I go to three instances, you'll see the circle that it's creating. I'll keep going up till you can actually see the circle a little bit. So let's notice some things about this polar pattern. Notice it started here and notice if I make this only uh, 180 not 100, 180 degrees. So you'll notice that the polar pattern starts here and it goes around this way until it reaches 180 degrees. If I wanted it to start here and go around this way, 180 degrees, I could do that by reversing the direction. And now it starts here and it runs 180 degrees the other way. So if I cancel that and I go back to my sketch not that sketch if i go back to the the right sketch you can see that i have my hole positioned um basically on an x and y coordinate now if i wanted to make my polar pattern angular so that I have an angle from here to here, and then I want to run that guy around 
and I'll do it because I think it'll make it easier to understand. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dimension away. I'm now going to create a construction line. To create construction lines, this icon here toggles between geometry and construction lines. So if I click that, you see all the lines went blue. I'll click it again, they'll go white. Click it again, they'll go blue. So if you see they've all gone blue, that means they're construction lines. So if I click this and I click that center point and click the point there, I now have whatever angle that is going to be. And I can dimension that angle. I don't know what it's like from here to here and dimension it. And now I can see a 67 degrees. I'm going to actually make it 60 degrees. So it's easy. So this is 60 degrees from the vertical to this point. And you can see I've, I've actually got a dimension going from here. It might be smart if we wanted to is, is to dimension this line and that would give us the radius that it's running on. But for now, I'll just leave it dimensioned where it is. I'm just going to update this dimension to be 26, just a round number. And so now you can see it's fully constrained. It is on this construction line, which is 60 degrees from the vertical. So I'm going to say close. Now, if I want to make my polar pattern, and I'm going to do, I'm just going to increase the number of holes. And I'm going to make this 180, just so you can see the direction that it's going in. So now if I look at that polar pattern, I'm going from here around to here, 180 degrees. Well, I want to reverse that because what my intention is to end up with one that goes this way and stops here. So let's see what we can do. So if I reverse it first, and now we know that this is 60 degrees. So if we make that 120 degrees, what we've actually got, I'm going to lower the number of holes again, just so you can see it. I love these uh, patterns because you can just modify how many holes you have that simply. So now I've got 60 degrees to here and 60 degrees to here. So I've got a pattern, a polar pattern that starts where I wanted it to, ends where I wanted it to. A lot of times when you're drawing these holes, the temptation is to draw a hole in the middle and expect that you can create this pattern from that hole in the middle, but you won't be able to. The way the polar pattern works, it starts with your first hole and then moves around either to the right or the left, depending if you have this reverse direction on. So if you had created the hole here, you could only go around this direction or this direction. You couldn't start, you couldn't make it go this direction and this direction. There's no bi-directional in this uh, polar pattern. So you just have to live with the polar pattern that you, that you have there. And so... The important thing with that is to know where you want to start it and where you want to end it and then just put the hole in the start position. So if I say okay to that, you'll see now I have my polar pattern and I can make my polar pattern. Obviously, I can go up to 360 degrees with a polar pattern. I could just go 90 degrees, but I'm always starting here and I'm either going in this direction or this direction. So those are the important things to, to recognize about the polar patterns. Now, we've already done uh, a mirror and we've already done the multi-transform feature in different videos. So I'm not going to go through those ones again. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to show you how to do um, a pattern on a path, which is slightly different. So I'm going to get rid of this polar pattern. I'm just going to delete it. And I'm actually going to delete my pocket. So I don't need that. And so back to just my pad. That's basically where I am now. And then I'll show you how to create a pattern on a path. Okay, so to do this, we need to go into the draft workbench. So you go up to your workbench and you select draft. And if you haven't loaded it before, it might take a little while before the draft workbench pops up. And once it does, you will see, um, you'll see some combination of these. I actually opened up my... Um, snap tools and I opened up all of these tools so you can see them yours might be hidden so if they're all on one line they'll definitely be hidden so just bear that in mind now with this um, it's going to be important 
that we draw our path and and make it one line so i'm going to show you a couple of things we can do to do that first thing i'm going to do is turn off that pad because we don't need to be able to see that on there and then i'm going to draw my path and to draw a path in draft uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it but one of the easy ways to do it is to use the grid so my grid is set up with one millimeter squares and you can change the way this grid is set up if you go into your edit preferences and then go draft and you have grid and snapping and here's where you set your grid spacing up so you can set it up mine set up to one millimeter main lines every 10 millimeters grid size is 100 lines uh, you can set it up exactly how you want that grid to be set up and that makes it easier if you're doing this kind of a uh, line drawing in, in draft so the other thing to know about draft is it has these snap tools and it works with these snap tools um, they toggle on and off and they're pretty self-explanatory if you look at snap and intersection snap on uh, perpendicular snap in the middle of a line the midpoint snap on the end of a line those are all important things if you if you're using the snaps so you can draw your path you can create it with a bezier curve so you can create a curve that you put it on or you can do it with lines you can do separate lines and then create those make those lines become polyline you can actually use a polyline and create the polyline so you can draw whatever you need to draw okay to make it simple on myself I am going to use the polyline and we'll go in from here go over 40 come down 20 go back 30 go up 10 back over 20 so that is my line then I'm going to draw a circle just like that I'm going to pop it on the end there Notice I used the snap into the end. And now I'm going to select this circle and this wire. And I'm going to say from here, a path array. So we're just going to click that and it will create a path array. So now what it's doing is it's creating four circles along this path. And they're evenly spaced. So now I'm going to make it eight circles and you'll see they're running along that path just like that now if i how do i make those into holes if i want those to be holes in my plate then i have to have a sketch of course and the path array is not a sketch so to make this path array a sketch i select this icon which converts bidirectionally bidirectionally between draft objects and sketches click that and now you see I have a sketch now one thing to point out is this sketch is outside this body so if I try and work on this pad and put a hole with this sketch it's not going to work I need to pick that sketch up drop it on top of that body and now it's inside that body so let's go back to our part design and let's just turn off some of these sketches that we don't need so that's the original hole that we don't need we don't need the path array and we don't need the wire so all we've got is our sketch now and i'm going to turn my pad back on i'm going to hit that button here to bring it to the middle and once more highlight the sketch and pocket that sketch and say through all and again nothing's happened because we have to reverse it and now you can see i have my um, holes that were on this path so this path went over here down here up here and up here up here so now my holes on that path are all through my plate and so you can create any path you want and you can create circular paths you can do an arc you could do a bezier arc and it will evenly spread those circles along that path so my path went across here if i go back here 
and turn on uh, the wire. And let's just turn this around. That guy. So here you can see there's my my wire. So my wire is here. Let's turn off our pad again. Our pocket. So here's my wire that it went along. And you can see my path array. And if I turn back on my pocket, you'll see those holes are exactly where they were on that path array. So that should should give you an idea on how to create holes in arrays or along paths to be able to create holes in patterns that you want. And it's important to be able to do patterns um, because many of the things that you create are, are patterned, are symmetrical, or, or are evenly spaced. And so those patterns work out really well for you. Now, one thing I, I did want to point out is how to turn this around. So I just freehanded it around, but you can actually just click these arrows and it'll walk it around just slowly until you get back to the top. And then always you can hit this button over here and it puts everything in the middle. And of course, the middle scroll mouse brings you back into the screen. Now, remember, I'm using the blender settings. So the blender settings are shown there. If you're using different settings, you can highlight just as I did there, and it will show you which ones um, you're using or which, how to modify your ones. But I use the Blender ones because I use Blender a lot too for my video editing. So again, patterns on a path, patterns, radial patterns, and linear patterns. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, if you have any ideas or things you want to see, feel free to... Uh, Leave those in the comments too. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you uh, haven't already, if you would subscribe, that'd be a great help. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.